Welcome to Indie Resources 16th video on how to make a browser based MWORG. This is Hall's Valhalla. Uh, this time we're going to do a couple more cleanups. We're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and add damage to weapons and then we're going to add an in and we're going to fix the monster problem where, you, where you're not having to continue to uh, to go through and re-add the monster. So to get started let's let's go into our uh, let's go into our my admin, PHP my admin and let's go to weapons and if you notice under weapons I added a new field called damage and I just made it medium integer 4 and then under the weapons I just gave them a damage number and I just did dagger 2 short sword 4 the next thing you want to do is under player weapons we want to add the exact same field damage and then if you already have some player weapons in here you might want to go ahead and add a damage that, that damage to them since they weren't actually uh, created since they were created after we added this and then the next thing we want to do, let's go into context or Adobe, whichever one you're using. Let me drop this so we can get everything. <clears throat> and we need to make sure that whenever we, whenever a person or a player buys the weapon, that the weapon actually adds that damage now, or the damage transfers from from one of the one table to the other, or the field to the other. So we want to under buyweapon.php under the query for the insert into player weapons we just want to add damage at the end and then we want to right here make a new variable for the damage and that way whenever they buy it that transfers from the damage and that's really all you got to do for damage as far as getting it to the weapon now we want to go to now we want to make it to where it actually does damage and this is just as simple it's really simple if we go down here to where the player attacks after we get past that right here I just did uh, made a new variable called weapon damage which is just the weapon info 3 damage and then and whenever it's player damage equals the random one I just made it one b between one and the actual weapon damage so it's just a ran still a random number of damage but the max is actually the max of the weapon now something we may do later because you don't want like a a 10th level fighter hitting with a sword and doing one damage because they they randomly hit one. Later on we're going to make it to where you do at least half the weapons damage and then the full damage. But we'll do that later a little bit later. Um which actually now we can I tell you what let's go ahead and do it now just so we don't have to do it later. Uh just make a new variable called half damage equals and then we're just going to I do a lot of shortcutting. half damage divided by two and then we'll take our half damage we'll put it right here let's kinda clean that up and that way the damage is between at least gonna do half damage but the max it'll do is the total damage that way you don't have this massive weapon doing one point of damage uh, and let's save that <coughs> and let's test that out real quick Battle in the arena. And let's attack. Four points damage. I have my sword, so I should do between two and four with the sword. Two points damage. Three points damage, yeah, so it looks like it's working. So the next thing we want to do is let's fix up the creature. Because I know I've had a lot of comments on the creature. Um, all I did with the creature is I changed that delete statement and I made it to where it updates it to where if you create kill the creature go let's go ahead and add a new let's add a new field under the creature table uh, creatures and we're gonna call it max h max hit points that's the max that this creature can have and usually when you first build the creature you're gonna wanna do the max and the hit points is the same but as the creature gets hit of course it's that's gonna go down but the max hit points will always stay so that kinda gives us a base of what it'll be max all the time. So I just made a variable and I called it CR max hit points, creature max hit points, and I took that variable. Then whenever we kill it, you go ahead and get your experience, you do everything, but we're going to re-update that creature and set hit points back to the max. And that way that creature just keeps renewing itself every single time. And that way you don't you can have a whole list of creatures, but you only need to have one entry for every every type of creature. That way you don't have all these different creatures saved up. <coughs> Now let's let's get out of 
this. And the next real quick thing I want to do is look at the ends. If I can get back to it. If we go back to the ends, I'm actually going to start us off. This is going to be the gateway to our locations of what I'm fixing to do with locations. I'm fixing to make it to where you can travel from town to town and each town will sell different items. It'll have different creatures or maybe we'll do forest or whatever. But uh, let's exit the arena and I'll kind of show you how I'm going to do this. If we visit the inn, would you like to stay? Current price, it, it, welcome to Shadyville and it's already got its own name. The current price is 10. Would you like to stay? Yes. It's got its own exit thing depending, depending on the inn. And then if you notice my hit points are back to zero. I didn't add spell points yet because I wasn't sure if I'm going to make resting bring back spell points if you have to have something special but we'll, we'll worry about that later um, what we want to do first and this is how this is how we're going to kind of start the locations we're not going to get super fast into, into creating these new new locations but we're going to start slow I made a new table called locations and I have fields here um, location name uh, ID which is auto increment uh, price level type greeting exit greet and you can just see the the different energy or the types I used here. If we browse this I went ahead and added the end and ID is one because that's automatic. Location is Crocania. That's going to be the different city towns or forest or whatever. The name of the actual place is Shadyvale Inn. The price is 10 and you notice how it cost me 10. The level is one and the level is going to come into play whenever we have weapon shops and magic shops. You don't want a first level wizard being able to walk in and buy this crazy stuff. Um, type is in and then it has a greeting and then it has an exit greet. So each each end can have a totally different greeting that you'll get each time. And then the, then the last thing I did is I went to players and I added a new field called location and that's actually going to be wherever they're located at. And for now I you, you may want to go into your guy and go and edit and put Crocania that way. He's there. Or, or whatever you decide to name your first town. Just make sure that the, the location of the, the shop that you're in and your location is the same. And if we go to, and if you notice here, even when you when you visit the inn, it stays within .php. I just kind of reloaded the page. Instead of doing it to where you go to a new page, we're going to kind of start moving away from that. But it's, in the beginning, it's a lot easier to learn that way. Okay, so I want to open up in since it's only one page. And basically the top of it's pretty much the same thing we go over every time you start your session. You, you add your CSS sheet. And then I went in and I did... Uh, if is set the po if if there's a post variable already set named price, then we're going to go run some code. But let's say there's not. Let's say we just visited the end. We're just now entering in it, and we're going to. Sorry, I'm using my mouse keypad for my on my laptop, and it's kind of hard to work with. Um, so let's do else. Then we're, we're going to first get the information. Select all from locations where location equals the player location. And if you notice up above, that PL location is the variable of where the player is actually located. And that's why you have to have your two locations the same. That way, if that way you can set up a, you know different ends. Let's say we have Crocania with this end, and we have some other place, Forestville or whatever. If whatever the player is located at, that's the end that it's going to pull out. And that's how we're going to make it all tie together. But uh, and then type equals in because we're actually in an in. So it's going to pull every in that's in that location, which we should only have one per location anyway. And then we're going to echo out the in's greeting and then the current price of the in. And then would you like to stay? And then we're going to do some standard um, HTML to get the variables. And then we're going to post. But if you notice here, the action is in.php. So we're going to reload the same page. But we're going to post a variable of the end's price. And that's where this up here comes into play. Because it's first going to say, well, if there's if you've reloaded it with that post variable, then let's do this first. And we're going to, we're going to set the variable price and the exit greet. And then if you're gold, if you have enough gold, then go ahead. But if not, tell them you don't, they don't have enough gold. And then just do the exit greet and... Um, the and then take them back to the end and then update the player's hit points to equal the max HP and if you want it to update the spell points just put S points equals and then max S points and you'll just have to put the max X points S points up here and I may add that in later but for now I'm not going to because we may have it to where we have a whole other shop set up for just for spell points just to kind of add a little little more to the game 